What's cracking, everybody? This is Pros vs. Joes. From 2006 to 2010, Spike TV allowed us the chance to finally see what would happen when you pluck a spry Joe from his house and put him in front of a professional athlete. What could possibly go wrong? Tonight, we have eight Joes in front of us, but we must quickly eliminate two. So a couple of dudes are going to be real disappointed when they flew out here for only 30 seconds in this video 20 years later. The rules of sudden death are really simple. Basically, two punters are going to kick to the Joes, and then if you get the ball, you try to score. If you don't have the ball, you try to maim another Joe. How neither of these balls were caught by eight dudes? Hard to say. We do have our first Joe to get a ball. He defends it with one stiff arm and two stiff arms. Damn, he might have rigor mortis. Our second Joe fleeces somebody for the rock and then runs in uncontested. Now for the second punt, our Joes do get a little bit better, but there's no way this isn't going to turn into a shit show soon enough. At this point, the show goes full on montage mode, so I can only imagine that this part took hours. Like I said, this just keeps going on, but we finally get number four. And after a little bit of running like Day Day from next Friday, we finally get number five. And with that, we have three Joes left, but only one spot. Our Joe scoops it up and just sorta sprints past everyone. He does have to go past his second Joe, but he dives at him and then does his best Yamcha impersonation. Luckily for the simplicity of the show, two of our Joes just need to get carted off anyways. Now that we have our final six Joes, they're ranked in order of when they scored and the top seeds get to pick the pro they go against. Enough of all this talking, let's meet our pros. Possibly the greatest NCAA running back we've seen, Heisman Trophy winner, all-time leader in points and rushing yards when he left college. Go check him out in the College Football Hall of Fame for his bio. Ricky Williams. I'm not hyping Ricky Williams up. He's legit the man at this point. Who's playing football? Better pray it's not me. There's money on the line here. I don't care how big you are. You're gonna be little when I'm done. Why did he deliver this line like a sitcom? The living embodiment of the word enforcer. Ranking 22nd all-time in rebounds, but fourth all-time in personal fouls. Knicks legend slash top of the MSG ban list, the Oak Tree, Charles Oakley. Who the bums over there? What, you guys shop at the same store? I'm sorry, is this coming from the man that's standing directly next to a dude that's dressed exactly like him? Former two division world champion. Retired with a record of 40 and nine with 31 knockouts only six months before this was aired. Known for his granite chin, lightning fast punches, his willingness to take any fight and inability to make it boring. Boxing Hall of Famer, Arturo, Thunder, Gotti. Who wants to fight over here? I'll do it. And then you guys, I'll see you in the square circle, let's go. Man, just because you look like James Tony's little older brother don't mean you can hang with the Thunder. Chill out. <laughs> I'm gonna eat too much. <laughs> These are the three pros that stand between you and immortality. If by immortality you mean this YouTube video, because this ain't on no streaming services. You get to choose what you want. Okay. All right. A bold strategy, but we always gotta respect the underdog, and damn it, if this show has one thing, it's underdogs. Ricky Williams is definitely off of that Ricky Williams, if you know what I mean, but I'm not gonna hear any Ricky Williams slanders. He's one of my favorite players of all time. Who do you want? Torah. I want a bar. You sure about that now? I'm sure. Forget about a bold strategy, bro. Do you have insomnia? All right. I'm ready. We're gonna have some fun. Pro tip, don't fight people who box for fun. You guys got Charles Oakley on the hardwood. Unless they got seven MSG security guards on deck, nobody is gonna be stopping Charles Oakley today. So the rules of the show are simple. The two pair of Joes go against the pros they just picked, and the three winners compete against all the pros. And the winner of that is our winner today. Hey, what you gonna do for Ricky? Put it on the question deal. is, can you tackle him more than me? Told you, your competition's against me. All of that does sound great in the locker room, but let's see how it sounds when you're standing across from Ricky Williams. Our Joe catches a truck stick, but he manages to trip up Ricky Williams, so that's a stop. He calls himself the real big daddy. I'm gonna try to kill him. <laughs> abort mission dog trust me abort mission ricky williams pretty effortlessly glides past the joe but that won't stop the trash talk that close that close to what lesson of the day is no win to shut your mouth now it's time for joe number one second attempt with ricky williams once again ricky williams dances past him and shows why he's elite after a long day of talking crazy it's finally this joe's chance to stop ricky williams and prove everybody that he should be in the league it's ricky robert trying to close the distance oh, oh, yes. 
Ricky Williams reverted this man back to childhood and he has him doing somersaults in the grass. I don't care how big you are, you're gonna be little when I'm done. So that event's done and he's definitely going to the hospital now. A lot of the events in Pros vs. Joes do end like this. He's done. I got his heart. He don't want no more. This man has a slip disc and we're really playing replays. Ricky Williams hit this man so hard that he just keeps staring at the grass like the grass is gonna hurt him again. If three Joes in the hospital this episode wasn't enough, Spike TV must be trying to fill out a punch card because now our Joes are going up against Arturo, Thunder, Gotti. Any of you guys have a neck brace? My mantra of life, go out there and try it, fail, succeed. Either way, at least you tried. Arturo is out here, no headgear, no fear, just vibes. Mark Bowling picked Arturo Gotti. Called him out, asked for this. Why is Petros Papadakis on the side of the ring just instigating? Arturo Gotti comes out, setting this Joe up beautifully by mixing in body shots before fainting low and dropping the Joe like everyday struggle. If you ever needed to know how to set up a lead hook, just watch this. Everybody's starting to sound like Charlie Brown adults, but our Joe decides to get up for some reason. Arturo must feel bad, so he lets the Joe try a little offense before hitting him with a mean left hook, looking confused while he was still standing, then finishing him with another. At the end of the day, going on live TV, getting knocked out by a Hall of Famer, none of that really matters. As long as you remember what a wise man once said. Fail, succeed. Either way, at least you tried. I wouldn't give this up for the world, man. That was awesome. And if you ever wanted to know the face of fear, look at the dude who got to fight Gotti next. If our Joe wants to secure the victory, he's going to have to last 90 seconds with our Turo Thunder Gotti. Donnie has a much clearer strategy. He's going to get on his bicycle. All of that movement is great, but while he's wasting all that energy, our Turo continues to stalk his prey. The Joe finally decides to sit down on a punch, and you're starting to wonder if that's a good idea. Approximately 12 seconds later, we get that answer. This is our first Joe's only chance. Will Donnie Frazier stay down? Like the Undertaker, he raises from the dead at the last second. This is the realization that you just got knocked out for no reason. Oh, you thought this was over because you won? At Pros vs. Joe's, every Joe loses. I don't know if y'all noticed that. He hit him with a solar plexus shot that was so fast that the cameras barely picked it up. Bro, you won like 30 seconds ago. Just stay down, man. Arturo punishes him for getting back up, so he hits him with a liver shot that makes him yell out. Damn! The last time I heard somebody yell damn in the middle of the ring was Ron Simmons. Our Joe makes it to the end of the round, and he survived. But at what cost, we'll never know. I guess until the end of this episode. Fight back! Fight back! After what I would define as a valiant effort, Things feel like jello, man. Donnie Frazier manages to become our second Joe to make it to the finale tonight. To find out who's going to be the last person in overtime, we're going over to the basketball court to face Charles Oakley. It'll be the best. This didn't get my opportunity, so I'm ready to collect my 100000 The objective of the game is to grab some rebounds over Charles Oakley, and it gets chippy immediately. If you know anything about Charles Oakley, just know that this might be the most dangerous challenge yet. The Joe did all that damn pushing just to get stripped on the way up. Charles Oakley puts in about 10% effort and ends up grabbing two easy rebounds. Finally, our Joe gets an uncontested opportunity at a layup, and he puts more air in that than a Reebok pump. With the second chance, he manages to air ball it worse. After doing what I'll call boxing out, Charles Oakley puts his hands down and the Joe still manages to break another layup. He gets the chance to clear the ball before getting right to his favorite spot and thunks it off the back iron. The Joe manages to grab another rebound and he never learned his lesson on his jumper so he tries a pirouetting fadeaway. It airballs like you would expect. After Charles Oakley stands out of frame for a while, our Joe finally gets his first bucket. All right. Let's argue in the comments, is this 360 hop step of travel? Our man is gas, so he starts showing his ass. Step back one legged, what kind of shot is that? Have you ever shot that shot? The score is set at four points, so let's see if the next Joe can get that. If we play football, basketball, baseball, boxing, whatever we do, I guarantee I advance from here. This man's finally gonna get the real Oakley experience. This is what Jordan Stans tell you 90s defense look like. Our Joe catches this long rebound and then he finishes off with some type of Kevin Garnett fadeaway. Lucky shot, lucky shot. Charles Oakley just puts his hands up and he's damn near blocking you. 
I wish I could see his feet right here because I know this is a walk. With a pretty solid box out move, our Joe manages to tie it. You can't say that this Joe doesn't want it, but that's Charles Oakley's ninth. Against all odds, our Joe grabs the board and then he hits the shot over Charles Oakley. And just like that, we have our three finalists. Each Joe will go against all three pros in various challenges and the person with the lowest time wins. The Gotti challenge is easy. All you have to do is land five clean punches on Arturo Gotti. The only problem is Arturo Gotti can defend himself. After a couple of quote unquote clean punches, our Joe has his five. Next, Donnie just has to sprint on over to the basketball court so he can pass some passes past Charles Oakley. What kind of sentence is that? This is either a clean ass move or a dirty ass double dribble. He actually gets fouled by Charles Oakley here and still manages to make it. Now he must stand up in front of Ricky Williams to try to stop. The first one is easy for Ricky Williams as he just blows past him with a simple juke. On the second handoff, our Joe just grabs onto Ricky Williams and just holds on for dear life and takes his ass down. Now he just has to sprint to the finish line and he has a pretty respectable time. Our next Joe comes out fighting like Kuma from Tekken. My man is furiously just swinging and not landing shit. What? What? And finally we call that over so it's time for some basketball. The second Joe comes out with a pretty good strategy for the passes. He just chucks them from half court. He gets the three, now he's on to Ricky Williams. And at this point, all of this is for nothing because his time has already passed Donnie Frazier's. Kevin Wentz playing for pride right now. They're down to salvage some pride. It's really gotta hurt your pride for somebody to keep talking about salvaging your pride and you to lose. He can finally take his L and we can move on to the third Joe. Our third Joe actually comes out with the best boxing skills of anybody. He's actually setting up punches and Arturo Gotti doesn't like that. Gotti must have really rung his bell because when he's escaping, he decides to turn around and keep fighting. Overall though, he has a pretty good time going into Charles Oakley. Okay, Magic Hall, I see you. That Gotti punch got Mike Hall acting on his intrusive thoughts as he starts running the hell away before finishing the challenge. I hit three. You need another one. And that little mistake just might cause Mike Hall because now his ass is gas. That pretty much seals the deal because unless he can stop Ricky Williams in negative time, this is over. Our Joe grabs on for dear life, but it's just not to be today. For the second time today, Ricky Williams absolutely crushes him with the truck, but he manages to trip himself up. Mike does too, I guess. And just like that, Donnie Frazier is going to be our champion for the day.